What's up? What's up? What's up? We are here with a Culture Good team, and hopefully we'll start to see everyone that's been registered jump on today. Um, if you're joining us after this workshop and you're watching the recording, uh, we're, this is our April workshop. We, every month, come together to provide opportunities for us to think different about business, the world, our impact how we engage with people in meaningful, fulfilling ways rather than just doing leadership as usual. And so I'm excited to join uh, George Rogers and Shannon Rose on our workshop today. And I want to introduce both of them, have them share a little bit about themselves and uh, so you can get to know them. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Shannon. You kick it off. Sure. I'm Shannon Rose. Shannon Rose Farrell Jackson is my full name if you want to look me up. But I am a love-based consultant, which means that I basically come into large corporations, usually the darkest of the dark, <laughs> and some of those, those corner aspects, and I bring and hold space for love to come in and do its great work. I help people communicate, connect, move through change, all kinds of things. But, you know, I do it with heart. And that's just who I am. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But eventually they love it. <laughs> and exactly. I have a new five-month-old puppy, Sammy Blue. He's a blue-ticked coon hound. Uh, he is keeping me super busy. So if I nod off, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because it's, it's not, not because the content, Ryan. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. I just wanted to make sure we're clear on that. <laughs> uh, and George. Man, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I got a dog too. She's, she's, she's a golden doodle and uh, lots of energy. Uh, so I'll, I'll post a, a funny video clip we, we did last night, just a little bit about the clip, but she's very territorial of me. She does not like anybody, uh, you know, high five and shaking my hand without her permission. She wants all the love. Uh, so she's a, she's a jealous dog. So uh, <laughs> let's see it, the it, video. Totally it interesting, uh, especially being a married man. So <laughs> <laughs> that back. just got it's a little not... weird, George. I don't think you should add anything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and uh, partner with the company here. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, as we're talking about doing good, one of the things that we, we, we do here uh, is we're in the recycling. So we do a lot of, uh, you know, give backs and donations in the tech world uh, uh, across Tennessee and uh, surrounding states. What's and, the name uh, of the company I'm, there that you work for? So it's S3 Recycling Solutions. Uh, it's okay. uh, uh, ITAD, you know, we work with K-12, financial banks, uh, medical uh, hospitals. Uh, nice. dispose of all their e-waste equipment, old laptops, computers, phones, medical equipment. Um, and then we repurpose um, those equipments and, and partner with, uh, you know, nonprofits and things of that nature uh, to kind of give back. So that's awesome. That's what we're talking about today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's perfect. Um, that just made me think, Shannon, share where you're from and sure. not just the culture of good. You guys are both on the culture of good team, but also like your day to day uh, also. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So, you know, one day it can be 110 degrees and the next day it can be negative 30. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I work full time uh, consulting through a company called Digineer. I love it. I work in organizational change and culture there in large healthcare organizations in this area. Uh, as Ryan and George know, I also run empowerment seminars and self-defense and mixed martial arts seminars. I train uh, UFC fighters, <laughs> and I also train myself. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, she's our she's our security. Anytime we get together, From now on, it's gonna be like yeah. I'll I'll have like pepper spray and chin, and I'll have. But I do it on. with a smile, Ryan. I do you, it. With you a you smile. beat people up with love. <laughs> that that should be the motto: beat yeah. your employees up with love. I love it. Love it. You <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Um, so again, we're real excited about this. For those that don't know me, I'm Ryan McCarty, uh, founder of Culture of Good, uh, which began as a movement almost, goodness, 10 years ago. Um, started talking about purpose-driven type organizations and mission. 
having a higher purpose, a calling in life. I came out of over 20 years of full-time ministry uh, and pastoring. And so the idea of meaning in, in life and purpose was something I talked about every week. And now I do that in business in terms of how we are a force for good and how we can not only um, <clears throat> make money and be profitable, but how we can do that very purposefully. And that's what Do Good is all about. So this, this workshop is going to be very interactive. So if you're on with us, um, we would love your feedback. The only way that this workshop is going to work is if we work it. So um, <laughs> it, grab a pencil, paper, pen, whatever. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear where you're joining from. You can post your company name in, in the comments. Um, let's, let's wait a little bit, George and Shannon. Let's get a little bit of feedback from everyone before we get to slide one. Where's, where's everyone from? Can we have a few people uh, put out their, uh, their company and uh, where you're listening in from or tuning in from? I said tuning in. That's an old radio thing. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Let's give it a second here. Just want to make sure we're – do we have anybody on? That's the, that's the next question. Yeah, I, I got, uh, I see, uh, we got some people from California on the Facebook Live and then on LinkedIn, uh, they're coming in. It is a reminder, another California, we got Bakersfield, oh, nice. California, so uh, we Thank are 30 seconds sure. behind, so there is a little delay on the ah. live stream, so we'll, we'll take our time on there from the stream, I think on the upload, it typically has a, a, a bit of a delay um, as we're discussing. Got some people from uh, Indiana, Muncie, Indiana, Stephanie, uh, welcome, Indianapolis uh, with Elizabeth Beth, Elizabeth. I said Elizabeth Beth. Stephanie, hey. That's awesome. Love all my indie folks. That's wonderful. Good to see you on here. Yeah, just keep posting that. We'd love to get some feedback because at, when, when we get into this workshop, uh, what we're going to be looking at is just simply asking questions of ourselves and giving some feedback and learning from each other. Uh, one of the things that I think we need to do more in, in our leadership and in our organizations is listen to one another, because um, although we can find really creative ways of doing things, a lot of times when we are in a community like this and we gather together, there are so many resources in the midst of that type of community. And the last thing that George and Shannon and I want to do is come on and say, hey, we're the experts. We have all the answers and just listen to us. And this is how to do it. We really don't want to do that. Stephanie, it's good to see you on. Stephanie and I uh, went through coaching, uh, a coaching program together and we're certified. And so, yeah, it's good to see you on here as well. I see Isaiah from Georgia. That's awesome. Um, so we're, we're excited to be able to be with everyone, but we would really love for you to also give your feedback because we'd like to hear what your company's doing um, in terms of the good. And when we say good, what we're talking about is how organizations operationalize their community impact to engage all stakeholders with good. So this isn't just, um, you know, what some might say touchy feely. This is how to operationalize. And, and, and the way that we do that with the culture of good is unique, but I know that every one of our companies has a different way of really living out our soul. Um, I talk a lot about bringing your soul to work and, and that's important to how we um, operationalize and really uh, run our businesses. So do good is really uh, made up of three components um, or three qualities. And all of these three make up what do good is. You can't have like a purpose driven company and not have community impact and it still be do good. It's very purpose driven. So organizations that are purpose driven, this can be a company, nonprofit, this could be a member organization, an association. Um, also, you're people centric. You put people at the very center of what you do, how you do it, your decision making, your day to day operations, um, you're going to operationalize this for people, right? So that they can connect and engage and feel the same passion that you hope that you can inspire through your work. And then lastly, of course, is the community impact. And, and if you mix all of these three ingredients together, 
it tastes really good. <laughs> but if you have one or two separate from the others, there, I, what we found is there's a miss. Um, so George Shannon on, on this, have, have you seen that um, where you might have an organization or company that you work with or have worked for that um, really hones in on one of these, but doesn't focus on the other two? Or have you seen how that plays out? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I see when I come in, especially in large organizations, is they've done a lot of work defining these things and talking about them, mm. but they're not putting them into action. Very few places where I come in has this been properly rolled out in a way that it can sustain and actually where you can see the effects. A lot of times they'll develop their purpose and they will identify their people and they will figure out their community impact and they all meet about it. All the leaders meet in a secret room and they agree on it. <laughs> and then they have one company meeting and declare it and yeah. then they check the box and yeah. then that's it. And that's yeah. not what we're talking about here. It's mm. different. It's, it's the part that comes after that. And it's the part that comes regularly after that consistently after that, that really makes that change, so. George? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a pause here and pass it back to you, Ron. I'm dealing with some uh, technical stuff on the back okay. end, make sure we're live on the other link. Uh, okay. And I'll jump back on. Oh, totally cool. <laughs> that's all good. Yeah, so that's really, uh, Shannon, interesting in, what, in terms of what you're talking about. Um, because I see that, and when you were talking, I could see how companies do these very in si even siloed efforts. This this doesn't become one centralized mission, right? It's right. What's our what's our purpose and mission and vision and values? All right, then we you know all important, right? Very very all important. important. Yeah. Oh God, our brand story, our messaging, yeah. who we are, all of that stuff, and and I would say. I'm talking to organizations every day and, and I'm hearing that since the pandemic, people are re-looking at and, and, and wondering, are these still our values? Because right. as we evolve, so do our values. I could say that my values are different um, today than they were before the pandemic. They're different before the pandemic than they were 10 years before that. Like it's you know, and so <clears throat> I would challenge any companies that have values that are still the same values that you've always said are your values. <laughs> Maybe take a relook at that or, you know, and then and then we have engagement efforts, right? Like it's right. like engage. And so for me, it's that idea of bringing these three together, which I think is really powerful. And then you're saying once you put these together, what's the strategy of action? Absolutely. <laughs> like, you know me, yeah. action, yeah. action. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you don't get to see the benefits. Yeah. I, I always want to. I always want to drive by those huge warehouses that paint <laughs> on the side of the building. We put, our, you know, we we put our people first with an exclamation point. And I just want to stop and walk through and just just watch what that looks like. Yeah. Um, because putting your people first sounds great, but it doesn't really play out in, in what I've seen in business when it comes down to making really hard decisions. We don't always put our people first. Um, and that and that is something that maybe what we need to stop saying in terms of, okay, we put people first is we put people at the center, right? You talk about the heart, like people are the heart, right? But do it in a way where your action is backing up our words. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I say is, that, you know, when I come into a, a, an organization and they're like, oh, we already have a culture program or we all I go, great. Show me. Yeah. <laughs> show me your culture program. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll point usually send me a link to the website location where are on the intranet where all the resources are. I'm like, you tell me, show me, yeah. show me this in action. Show me how you're group is living it out, so, you know, all those things. Mm. And the cool thing about saying show me is that's one of the biggest parts about culture of good is we we look heavily on the evidence, on the, on the observable behaviors, not only the observable behaviors that we see, 
mm-hmm. but the observable behaviors that we want to see. Yeah. You know, and defining those and then setting those programs in place to get there. So yeah. to me is a big part. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, this is this is really, really uh, powerful. I was just looking at one of the comments that um, Elizabeth said. She's an accountant transitioning careers. So you want to stay on to the end because we have an announcement um, to make about that very thing. And um, so if anybody's on here that you say, okay, great, but my organization doesn't have this, what do I do? Well, we're going to talk about that today because you, because I've found that you can be a spark wherever you're at in an organization. You just have to first get that spark inside of you and then be willing to continue to grow that fire uh, throughout the organization. I want to say this, when I launched Culture of Good at TCC, I was a part-time employee um, and I had a um, little cubicle in a random room with a bunch of uh, the marketing team who loved all the lights to be off. So I don't want to hear anybody say, well, I'm nobody in my company. How am I supposed to do good and get people inspired? If you're working in the dark in a little cubicle part time and can launch a movement to over 2000 employees, you can spark inspiration and good in your team, in your department, with those that you're working with or those that are working for you. And so I just want to inspire everyone out there. It's possible to not only do good, but to inspire others to do that good as well and to really grow this movement from the ground up. This is not just a top-down approach. This is everyone together collectively working for the greater good of the workplace and world as one. So when we talk about streamlining our efforts, we're streamlining all of these three, the purpose-driven, people-centric, community impact type organizations. That's what we're helping to build. And uh, we have some exciting news on how each one of you that are on here can do that for your organization or for other organizations in the future. Um, George, give me a thumbs up if you're good to jump back on. Oh, oh, well, you add yourself, I think, right? Or do I need to add? Okay, cool. I'm still learning stream, stream yard, y'all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so purpose-driven. Um, Shannon, what's the purpose uh, and mission of your organization? Um, to uh, drive change through love. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ah. You know what's beautiful is like saying it that quick is like you just get right to it. Yeah. I love it because what else <laughs> needs to be said? Um, Caleb, thanks for jumping on from Westfield. Uh, I would love for anyone to comment here. These questions are where you can comment. So if you're on here and uh, if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn or, or Facebook, go ahead and comment underneath. We're watching those. They're popping up in our feeds. I think the, the LinkedIn is the main one in terms of the comments. George, I know you have a lot on Facebook as well. Um, So those that are on with us here, what is the purpose or mission of your organization? Like what, what, how would you say that just in a few words or one sentence? Let's give everyone a chance to just comment on that. And if you, you know, I always like to say this, it's hard to think on your feet about that. A lot of times people don't know. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know, take a guess. Yeah. What do you think your organization's purpose or mission is? And what Ryan, in one of our um, workshops that we put on, one of the things we always say is, how would you describe it to an eight-year-old? Real brief sentence, if you were talking to an eight-year-old, what would the purpose or mission of your organization be? So I'd love to see some best guesses if you don't know the actual one. Yeah. And and this right here is where we start with every, every time we meet with someone or work with someone in a workshop. This, this is so key, right? Because yes, absolutely. I talk to so many leaders um, 
that's just like you, Shannon. We're like, okay, we drive change through love. It's like instant. <laughs> and then you have like 200 employees. And then I go and ask every single employee and it's completely yeah. like a different purpose or mission, which tells me that is not the purpose of the organization. The centralized purpose or mission. I love that, Caleb. Protect and support the community. Yeah. yeah. Because it's insurance. So this is beautiful. Caleb, you got this right. That is that is a beautiful way of describing what you do in insurance <laughs> to an eight-year-old because an eight-year-old is not going to understand if you describe all the aspects of insurance to them. Once you understand that you can protect and support the community, as Caleb said, um, and hopefully I'm pronouncing this right. I see it. Chiro Chirp. Chiro Chirp is the organization. Um, you know, that's that's something that you have the opportunity then to protect and support the community through doing good as well, not just through uh, your business work. Oh, Shannon just jumped off. So uh, hopefully she's jumping back on. I think we're having some technical difficulties, but I'll keep going with this. Um, love it, Whitney. Uh, campus is committed to full diversity academic freedom and meeting the changing educational and research needs of the state, the nation, and the world. I love that you're committed to full diversity. Having that sense of purpose and that mission, driving daily decisions matters. See, this is why it matters to know our purpose, because if I use IU Bloomington, if the campus is about being committed to full diversity, then, um, oh, hold on just a second. Uh, I've got a weird uh, text here from George. It's not live, is not connected to the live stream yard. Not sure if it's connected. What's going on? So the, the live event, everybody's good now. We got to move over. So there are some people that was on the live event um, and that was not live, but um, they're- Oh, they're it was not connected to the live event? Oh, yeah. geez. Goodness. <laughs> but you're good. You're good. All right. Did they miss Michelle's everything back. up to this point? We're all good. Did they miss everything leading up or were they? No, no, you're live up? on your page. Just the ah, event okay. never never broadcast. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you all. If you are jumping on right now, um, we we love feedback and, and experiencing this together. Uh, rather than us just answering all the questions collectively, we want to see what the community has to offer. So this is part of the workshop. We're doing a little bit different today. Thank you, George, for handling all the tech stuff for this man. I I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> oh, oh, were the days when I was on by myself. <laughs> uh, okay, so some of you lost like 10 minutes. All right. Um, well, we'll have this recorded and sent out. Essentially what we're doing is looking at what does do good actually mean? And I'm just gonna go back to this real quick for those that weren't on. Do good is very purpose-driven, it's people-centric, it's community impact, all collectively, one effort, streamlined doing good. So rather than having these in siloed efforts, these are very tied together and actually support each other and support the community that you call your organization, company, nonprofit, uh, or association. So we're asking people what the purpose or mission of their organization is. What uh, would you say, George, that the purpose or mission of the organization that you have, in, uh, what is it? It's, it's called S3? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So really our purpose is, um, to, to build and grow people uh, and impact our, our community uh, by uh, doing that through the tech uh, technology world. So, um, you know, we, nice. we grow people, uh, lead people um, and impact the community. Um, in nice. Way. I love it. Use tech to grow and lead people um, and impact community. Um, what I was sharing is how important it is, as Whitney said, that diversity is part of the purpose of the organization she works for, because then when Whitney makes decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, she understands that that's part of her decision-making process. So purpose, purpose speaks to what you said, Shannon, action, right? What, it's not about taking action, it's about taking the right action. The right action is tied into this idea of purpose. 
once we understand the purpose or mission of our organization, once we understand what that means and how to define that. And at Culture of Good, we have a process that helps to define what that is. The next step is really saying, all right, how are we communicating that purpose or our purpose to all of our stakeholders? We're going to get into stakeholder groups in a moment, but let's think about the very like clear ones, um, employees or whatever you call them, team members, your customers or clients. <clears throat> um, and uh, it could also then be your community, um, right? So so how, how uh, are we communicating the very purpose? I did a video a while back with a bucket with holes in the bottom. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I poured water in it and talking about vision and purpose and how like as leaders pour that purpose and vision into the organization, it's always leaking. Vision leaks, purpose leaks, messaging. So we have to constantly be communicating and pouring that purpose back into the hearts and lives of our people. So what are some ways, um, George, Shannon, that you could add that are really creative or maybe just really solid, sustainable ways to communicate purpose to stakeholders? So one of the biggest things um, when I when we come in is we do this stakeholder analysis. We first have to figure out who all our stakeholders are. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be so surprised when we go through this exercise, how many people are like, oh, our clients are a stakeholder. Mm -hmm. Oh, our vendors, our contractors, mm -hmm. they forget about these or accounting, you know, they forget about all these peripheral groups who may not be necessarily needed in a change or in it, or they may not be, uh, you know, severely impacted by whatever we're doing. However, they are a part of this ecosystem that makes it possible. So for me, doing that type of an analysis, identifying them and how um, involved they're going to be, that's to me the first step. And then that will tell you how you need to communicate to these people are is it a group that you think is going to be highly excited about it great mm. then let's get them involved in co-creation let's have them be champions of the movement let's give them more ownership in this and have them be part of the communications are they a highly resistant group <laughs> that's yeah. not really sure they're like the kind who tip, dips their toe in the water before jumping in um, maybe the, that group needs to be gently nudged and communicated to over and over and over again and be brought through the change, you know, led mm -hmm. through. So there's just different, to me, there's different ways of communicating to our stakeholders, but first and foremost, who are those stakeholders to you and your organization? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would, I would say identifying, uh, the stakeholders and key stakeholders uh, is important. And one of the things that I, I believe is, is huge and adding on to the identification of that is also understanding how they communicate or receive communication, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? Because not every one of us receives the, the same type of communication. Some people may need presentations. Some people are, are, are community. Some people want to see it and read it uh, to be able to believe it. But I believe you also, I always dictate, you know, three keys uh, for me, uh, and our company is really identifying and then communicating with the project drivers, people who are going to drive the project, the purpose and the goal um, and that vision. Uh, and then with that, making sure everybody understands the expectation. Right. Uh, if you, you understand your role on that, um, also understand the expectation that you may have uh, for that as well uh, so that you can be able to balance um, and understand, you know, how am I participating in this? And how am I communicating? Uh, and then the the final thing is how you measure, right? Mm -hmm. are you measuring uh, the most important thing is you know, their their time. Um, and, and I always say the greatest ROI is never money for companies; it's attention. Uh, if we can get their attention, uh, we can gain their trust. Uh, the money. Mm -hmm. will um, so um, those are some of the key steps, the foundation steps that I believe in. Obviously, identify, uh, you know, you know how you're going to drive it, and really make sure we understand the expectation. Um, on both sides. I understand what you're expecting so that I can prepare to be able to deliver that and you understand uh, you know, the expectation that we're bringing and then measure it as you move forward. Yeah. If anybody's on and would like to share in the comments ways that potentially um, 
you're able to see how your company or organization is utilizing communication methods that you might think are unique. Um, obviously, email is important, right? Cannot be the only thing that goes out. <laughs> I, I, I liken it to the, uh, the marketing idea that you're always marketing yourself internally and how important it is to market your brand seven different ways for people to connect and engage with it. This is just how my mind thinks. And I've always thought if, if we could come up with multiple ways of communicating, that really matters because to George's point, not everybody communicates the same way. So people might be, it might be that we have a great purpose and a great mission. They just might be missing it. Um, there's some keys with this that are really important. The CEO, owners, executive team, although this is not a top-down approach, if they're not fully bought in, and if they're not speaking to the mission and the purpose of the organization on a consistent basis, uh, there's a miss there. Uh, does that mean that you can't do it? No, that just simply means that that's something that is going to need to happen at some point where leadership needs to really utilize the purpose and mission and lean their um, influence in, because to George's point, it creates attention when leaders speak about something. How, how do people know within our organizations what matters to us if we're not prioritizing it with what we're talking about? So I encourage every type of communication going out. Um, there's, there's a lot of complexities with this when you have contractors, you know, that's a stakeholder group. When you have contractors that, you know, I, I talk to organizations, they're like, okay, we have several contractors that have worked with us for 30 years and they don't, they have a flip phone, Ryan. Like uh, we're gonna have to print this out on a flyer and hand it to them with a magnet and tell them to put it on their, their fridge when they get home. So they'll, they'll, you know, that's how they need to be communicated to. So I think knowing your people is really important and that's going to get to that people centric piece. Um, but communicating, speaking to it when we have huddles, when we have one-on-ones, when we're talking about uh, employee satisfaction, going beyond that to speaking and surveying around our purpose, you know, asking every one of our employees through surveys, how would you describe the purpose of our company? Jeez, imagine the kind of things that come back from that, because we're going to talk about culture here in a moment. The purpose leads to that culture. So pretty cool stuff. Um, how does our purpose drive the daily operations through our organization? Um, George, how do you see the purpose of what you do driving operations through um, your organization, how, do, how does that look? I think the, for, for us, it impacts um, a few areas uh, for us. So with our strategies uh, and our efficiency uh, through our company, uh, which op it obviously is, is part of the operations that they go on the day to day. Um, but I think every department within our area from data entry um, to uh, remarketing, repurposing, um, you know, a big thing for us is that, you know, working with, you know, medical uh, hospitals and, and banks, uh, there's a lot of proprietary and private information. So uh, with us being at the highest level of our industry, um, we, we practice, you know, security uh, is a key for us. And so you know, being secured in those areas uh, to make sure that the product is great um, and, um, and clean uh, is, is a value. So it, it starts at the top with, you know, really the, the S3, you know, symbol of uh, security, uh, sustainability and stewardship. You know, those, mm -hmm. that's what the S3 is. Uh, we want to be good stewards of every aspect of our time. And so it, it's driven through us to be stewards of our time so that we're efficient uh, with what, you know, has been uh, uh, trusted you know, with us. Um, and so, um, it impacts us in those areas. And I think it's key even for our people uh, to see the big picture. When well, one, we have you know, clients you know, ver that are public and private. Uh, and then the, the ultimate purpose is to be able to you know, be people who are able to give back uh, and, and make an impact. Um, and so following the processes through that, uh, our big picture is in everything that we do or say um, in every team huddle that we end. Um, you know, we end with three words, nothing shall be impossible. Uh, and so that's our statement. Uh, and uh, after every team meeting, that's top to bottom. Uh, we get every 50 plus employees in a warehouse 
Uh, and we discuss some of those things uh, twice a week uh, mm. to make sure we're all on the same page. And it's not it's not the CEO or CFO, myself, or any of the leadership team, you know, six or seven of our leaders. It's not us talking. It's yeah. the voices of our people. Um, I hate the term lower level employees, uh, but it, <laughs> our foundation, our, we, it's our foundation uh, uh, from, mm. for the people that are picking up from our logistics team to receiving it. Uh, nothing should be impossible with the end goal of how can we impact uh, the next person uh, with this material. Awesome stuff. Really cool. Um, before we move on to the next, um, I just want to mention purpose and the mission. If, if you're still kind of like, okay, how do I define that really quick? Just think about what you do as a company, your core competency. Um, what is it that you do? And why do you actually do it? <laughs> if, you're, if your sole purpose is making money, that's it. That's your purpose. And um, good luck inspiring people with that. <laughs> Other than them making money. Now, listen, every employee, one of the things that employees are looking for are successful companies. Nobody wants to work for, a, uh, you know, if, if you're picking two cruise liners to jump on, you don't want the one that every once in a while starts to sink, right? Like you want, you want, you want like to know that you're jumping on to a, a boat that's going to float. But what's going to happen while we're on the boat? That's your why. And, and I think that's really important when people get onto your boat, they're getting on for a certain reason. They're wanting to work for you for a certain reason. They're wanting to do business with you for a certain reason. I was just talking to a display company about possibly coming to do a keynote for them. Um, and they're, they're adding community impact messaging into their displays for retail locations. So as customers walk in the door, I remember we did that in our retail stores uh, at TCC, the cellular connection. Uh, we had an entire wall dedicated um, and they changed all the displays up and made sure that there was a wall in every store that showed the community impact. Um, and that, that says something when it matters that much, but you gotta put the money, resources and time behind it to be able to do so. So, Going from purpose-driven to people-centric, this is where we go from not people being first in our company. Like we don't put people first, we put them at the center. I love that idea. Um, so let's talk about those, Shannon. Stakeholder groups, you mentioned them. Can you mention some? And maybe we can have others that are on the live feed. Go ahead and comment if you can think of any other stakeholder groups, if you're on with us. Well, like some of the major stakeholder groups that we automatically think about our leadership teams, our middle management, our employees, some of the ones, like I said, that we don't necessarily think about or uh, are our peripheral or support groups. Mm. So if we have facilities, what about our facilities management teams? <laughs> mm. You know, uh, what about our developers? Our mm. IT groups, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, the people, HR, <laughs> people are paying our paychecks and things like mm. that. What about any uh, vendors that we work with? Maybe we leverage some certain systems or drivers or transportation groups. And those are all part of our ecosystem as well as, and I think of it as, you know, anything that is entering and feeding into our company and anything that is receiving stuff from our company. So mm. if we're getting parts and we're buying and purchasing, they're part of our group. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we are delivering to clients, which most of us are in services or product, they're part of our stakeholder group. So when I think about that, um, I, you know, there's all this stuff, but one of the most important stakeholders is yourself <laughs> mm. and any change starts with self. So I always remind them that you yourself are a stakeholder and need to be included in this process. And if you want change around you, you need to start with self again, that centric piece and not in a selfish way, but you need to be starting that transformation. What are the blockages in me? What's my own resistance to this? And where is my heart in this? And when you get on board, that energy starts to emanate out. So mm. there you go. How's that? 
<laughs> oh, geez. That's beautiful stuff, yo. I'm going to put that up right here. Any change starts with self. So, so good. Yeah, I think about like board member, like our, if you have a board, a foundation, if you have, um, there's all types of other type, you know, stakeholders. George, can you think of any, or also George, you can maybe add in, um, what are we, what are we actually helping to define, right? So like, okay, we have our middle management. They're completely different than, um, you know, in, in terms of our conversation with the executive team or the owners or our vendors, those stakeholder groups are different. So one of the things that we do, like Shannon said, is define those groups, but then what are we looking for when they're defined? Like, how do we, how do we begin to think about those groups differently? I think it's not understanding the value that they bring. Uh, I think what Shannon said is important. The number one stakeholder is really you as an individual, right? Um, and what you bring and, and need from, from that position. Um, but depending on those types of stakeholders, and she mentioned a lot, you know, the suppliers, employees, investors, the customers and clients that you may have in the community uh, that is around you. Uh, that you're on the impact, uh, depending on you know what type of business. Sometimes you're 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 connected to city or government officials, uh, and so there's different uh, value adds there um, that you you do, and so the engagement you know changes. Um, I can see Shannon's face now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where did Shannon go? Pick a move. And so uh, you know. It, it, you know, making sure and it goes back to what I said earlier. I'm always you know, about the communication piece. That there's, you know, how you communicate and what you communicate, uh, the type of communication uh, and massaging that relationship the, the right way uh, to not necessarily make sure you're trying to please somebody because we don't want to get in the pleasing business of people. Uh, but, you know, you're you're aligning the principles um, uh, that you you want uh, that's geared and centered to the heart piece of as we begin at the beginning, that, that purpose, um, uh, mm. to, to where we're going with it. I love it. I think, I think it's cool to think of it in terms of like blind dating each one of those stakeholder groups, you know, like you're wanting to engage with them. So how do we blind date them or like speed date rather? Um, it's not a blind date, it's a speed date. And we're essentially like asking quick, you know, questions to learn about the person, not, not to get the conversation over, but what kind of questions will we ask when yeah. we're just getting to know someone in a, in, for the first time in an intimate way, really, where you're asking vulnerable questions. What are you passionate about? You know, what do they care about? You know, what, what are the challenges they have at work that are different than other people's challenges? Um, what makes them tick, you know, looking at every aspect of who they are really helps with what George was talking about, actually communicating to them in ways that can motivate and empower them, uh, to be engaged in what they need to lead this forward. Um, what qualities of a workplace culture, um, are current and future stakeholders looking for? Uh, yeah, George. I, I would say that, so, you know, going into that, I think, uh, this a recent conversation with one of our investors, uh, Daryl Freeman. Uh, every time I see him, it's it's about it, you know what you did, but the conversation then leads to opportunities for growth, right? Uh, and so there's there's two things that uh, that that Ron and, and Daryl really focus on within our network and our our businesses. All right, you know opportunities for growth, and then because we're so important, and culture is so important, culture collaboration. How, how do the, the team and the culture of our company then uh, goes to go, uh, goes to that next step? Um, and I think that's good communication. We, we, we seek opportunities for growth. Um, you know, congratulations. Let's, let's celebrate and re, uh, reward, have a reward system uh, in place for the success that we, we, we come past. Uh, but then we're looking to the opportunity of growth um, and, and really having uh, that mm -hmm. centered around our strong purpose and core values. Um, and so, you know, we, we recently and even in this discussion yesterday in our leadership meeting started discussing uh, the, the revision of our core values and how that aligns with uh, our overall purpose um, and, and, and moving in the right direction so that we can. It's part of the language. It's part of who we are, yeah. part of everything that we say in every aspect uh, uh, of our movement. Mm, good stuff. 
I think one of the biggest uh, things when you think about qualities, it's like, yeah, we could list off a ton. We want it to be flexible. We mm -hmm. want there to be give back component. We want all these things. But the point is, is that stakeholders want to see this culture and they want to see the effects of the culture. Mm. The only way to get to the effects of that culture are like we talked about by putting it into action and um, creating spaces that are driven and held accountable by strong culture facilitators. Not mm. every company has that, right? Yeah. I get that, right? Not everyone has, they might have someone who is devoted to defining the culture, to creating content around the culture, but delivering it, driving the culture, making sure it's put into action each and every day, holding it accountable, measuring it, all those boring things that we don't yeah. want to think about because we love being excited about it and creating it. But all this stuff that actually delivers the results that our stakeholders want to see from the culture, you need someone focused on that. Whether you're bringing in a third party to do that, whether you have a team on boots on the ground within your company, to me, stakeholders want to see the culture in action. They want to see the effects of it. And the only way to really get there is to have those strong facilitators who can hold space for that culture to act, to enable that culture to actually be and live and grow. Mm, it's good stuff. Yeah. To be, to live and grow. You got all these cool, uh, I need three point to sermons like inside of you. Company or something. That's <laughs> awesome. That's good. This is a great opportunity for us to um, also George is saying, go ahead and place your uh, different qualities you look for. Um, you know, I, I hear people always wanting to be a part of something that is fulfilling. They're going to spend eight or more hours a day there. Um, <clears throat> friendly environments, people that they can connect with. We talked about that a couple months ago on a workshop, like people, you need a couple friends. That's what people, it's just it's so helpful to go to work and know your friends are going to be there. It's pretty cool, you know? Um, but this one's a great opportunity for, within this workshop to uh, get some real quick feedback on a scale of one to 10, just put the number out there. How, how inspired are you? Those that are on with us, um, just put in your chat. When you think about or consider your organization's purpose, we're talking about feeling right now. And this is something we do with culture of good quite a bit. And I'm going to give you an example on how to um, recalibrate uh, that. But on a scale of one to 10, and I'll go ahead and put mine in, how inspired am I when I consider my organization's purpose? Well, with culture of good, it's pretty inspirational because that's most of what we do. Um, but there's still a lot of room to grow in that, you know, and I think that's important to have. And so I'm going to give... Um, give myself in terms of my feeling, I'm going to just give myself a seven on that. If there's anyone else that would like to post their number in there, um, go ahead and put that in, or you can just write it down on a piece of paper. And then once you write your number down, um, then I want you to write another number down. So we're going to go beyond feeling. Shannon brought up observable behaviors uh, earlier. I'm just going to give you one observable behavior. So maybe we can recalibrate that score. Um, how inspired are those around me by how inspired I am <laughs> on a scale of one to 10? I think one of the biggest things about that is what's the number one, are you telling great stories? Are you talking about it? Are you emanating the energy about it? Is your, you know, what you're inspired about and passionate about, is that part of every discussion you're having? That's observable. Um, that's observable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the recalibration that we look at. And we do that with values work too. So George, you were talking about the different values, um, opportunities for growth. Say somebody is like, yes, that's what I want. And then you say, okay, let, here's a list of five observable behaviors. So when we have opportunities that are afforded to you, do you take them? Do you sign up for that professional development class? Do you 
you know, so, so is there observable ways that we can see the values lived out in individuals, teams, and the entire organization? Um, that's a powerful way of looking at it. Thank you all for jumping on and putting that number. I, I went from a seven to a five. And I do think I'm inspirational to others, but I, I know that no one, this, I, I used to teach leadership in church all the time. And I would tell my leaders, if everyone around you could only be inspired 50% of what you are, how are you, how are you showing how inspired you are? Like to Shannon's point, like you're going to be more inspired than anybody else, right? <laughs> Like, yeah, but what, what is, how is that translating to those around you? Because that's always going to be less. So continue to look for ways to be inspired. And, uh, and that's hard to do sometimes when we get into the day to day and, and, uh, in the whirlwind of work and what we have to do. This is the powerful piece of what we're talking about in terms of do good. It's the community impact. And this is something that most companies I'm finding in organizations have some way that they're doing good, that they're caring about the community. I would love people to share. This inspires me when you share, um, you know, and that's why we encourage people to share the good that you do, not because it's about bragging, but because you can inspire others through that good. Um, how often are we doing that engagement? Like how are we engaging our community through doing good in our organizations, uh, what does that cadence look like? So is your organization having a one day event, our day of good, and then everybody gets a tie dye shirt and the company writes a big check and then we all go out and plant trees and we take a bunch of pictures and post it and then nothing happens for the rest of the year until that same date the next year. Or is there a cadence? Others I've talked to, Business owners said, I've got a million things. Every time someone comes up to me, I write them a check and they go do good with it, but there's no strategy. So how often, George, Shannon, should people be engaging in community good? Like what, what does that look like through the culture of good? And then as an example. Okay, uh, you go. <laughs> I'll say this because I think, I think when I first started, um, uh, doing good and, 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 and really been involved with culture of good, it looks different for everyone. And I think some people get demotivated, right? Because they see like a TCC, right? The heartbeat of it. I mean, we're talking about thousands and millions of backpacks over the course of years. And it's yeah. like, man, we can't do that. Mm. But the reality is, is you can do the, the, the most important word in all of this is do. Do what you can. Um, and, and, and with the time that you have, um, with our business and our company, uh, for instance, uh, one of the new departments we just launched, uh, this morning, we have, uh, we, we got a team of two and twice a month, they have to do something, uh, outside of these, these four walls of our, our business. Nice. Uh, and, and so that's what we're able to do. And, and, and it's not always about money. Sometimes the greatest ROI is time. Give your time to people. Um, uh, and some people just need love or empathy in your hands uh, to serve. Um, and so I believe it's, it's what, number one, figuring out what can you do within the means. And it doesn't always have to be monetary. Uh, it, it, it's not always about money. Um, you know, all these huge industries and companies, they, they can give money. But I think the greatest impact that has ever been made with me, Ryan, and, and you were part of that, was time. And, and I think that's the, the huge value for me. Shannon, what about you? Yeah, so I was going to say something similar in the beginning is that there is no one size fits all for this. There is no weekly, daily. The thing is, is it's about, to me, it's just about consistency mm -hmm. and about doing it even when it's hard, even when it seems impossible, and even when you don't want to. Yeah. Going up to the mission all the time. So mm. I get that from my mixed martial arts training, you know, that That's white belt cool. mentality. I'm never there. I will, even when I'm a black belt, I still won't be there because mm. there is always something to be moving forward to. And the way you, you move up ranks, the way you make impact in the world is by showing up whatever that cadence is 
consistently over time and showing up no matter what the conditions are. Mm. So for me, that's the that's the biggest thing I can say about about that is it doesn't matter what the cadence is for your organization or what feels good or you know how many people you have devoted to it, how many dollars. Pick something, right? Do as George yeah. said. Pick yeah. something. Pick a cadence and do it. But I love the concept of um, time because that is something that we all can have. And one thing as leaders and organizations that we can do is help our employees and our managers and our leaders create time to do good. So if that is giving them, you know, one Friday a month, or a half day every month for them to go and you know be a part of something else, that's fine. I personally, in my work, part of my give back component is empowering the world through these empowerment seminars, teaching people how to defend themselves and others, you know, um, and not just physically. Yeah. But how do you do that? How do you create spaces of love mm. so that uh, fear and harm cannot enter and so mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing that i do and so that you know i i help do that through doing that through women's groups and others and that is funded <laughs> that time is funded by the other big work that i do so it, it is it's that type of a a trade-off but i give up my time and my services because i want yeah. the world to be a better place for everyone i love it yeah. I, I would also add this ryan if i can um and, and jump in is Yep, I just take one level. minute because we got to wrap up here. So, <laughs> so I, I think there's levels to it as well. Um, you know, what you do individually, and I think this kind of fits around. I know we're going to get into it in the next couple of months, but the, the my good, our good, and big good, I think there's levels to that. And as you discuss that and we, we talk about it in the future, um, there, there's always something. Uh, and sometimes mm -hmm. it starts with just my good, what I can do to be able to impact the, the rest of the company culture as well. Yeah, I love that. So the big good, our good, my good, big good being everyone collectively doing good, whether that's two people, Stephanie mentioned two employees, 200, 2000, everyone collectively doing good uh, quarterly, if possible. And then the our good are teams and departments engaging in good quarterly. And then the my good would be the individual, each person have an autonomy to choose to do that. That operationalizes the good in a way if you need that type of system, that is something that we teach to both uh, George and Shannon's point, it doesn't have to look that way. It could look completely different, but that is a way to operationalize it. Very quickly, we have two minutes, so I'm just gonna finish up Ryan, with the last. Yeah, go ahead. Great that you have a question in the oh, comments. I thought awesome. that would be I did not. Answer. That would be great. And then we can just wrap it up with this last thought. The history of my company is engineering focused. There are now multiple manufacturing sites and regional. I've noticed a difference in how many employees are treated in a corporate office. Oh, of course. <laughs> how can a company maintain their core competencies and hold accountability with so many branches? What we found is that um, there's a difference between doing this work embedded into the culture and daily activities and how uh, accountability is rolled out and is that connected into the overall culture? We were able, Elizabeth, to see uh, a central culture that was prior to the culture of good being very decentralized. So having that, the community impact and effort and the good as a collective allowed everyone uh, that was so separate in their work and in their functions to come together with one mission, one purpose, to do good for the community and every everyone knew how to get behind that. Once we began to implement that, it started to impact how accountability was going to be addressed within the organization because now we had to first bring the whole community together to build that movement of everyone that felt connected because you know everyone's looking at the central office as that's where, you know, um, that's where all the efforts put into it, but everyone in, in separate offices may not feel connected. So first we're looking for connection, relationship, time, and to have something that everyone can collectively get behind. Once we did that, 
then we were able to focus on aspects of accountability and other things. If you start inputting accountability without knowing all those stakeholder groups and all those departments, and you're not giving them opportunity to feel fulfilled, you're again, putting rules, regulation and compliance into a system that at the very beginning, people don't feel connected to. So we start with a sense of purpose, driving the overall mission of a collective good on a big good scale where everyone knows what they're getting behind, what the purpose and vision and values of the company are, and then operationalizing that for engagement and doing and action as George and Shannon have been pointing out throughout this process. Once you do that, then you can start to add elements of accountability because people know why in the first place. If they don't know why they're being held accountable, the assumption would be that they're doing something wrong. And so we're focused on that rather than how do we drive a culture by people doing something right. And then once we do the something right, then the accountability elements can be placed and kind of crafted into that process, which is a whole nother conversation. I'd love to continue talking about that. Um, this last question, in what ways, I know we skipped the one, but we've talked about the core competency and, and we're out of time here, but um, we want to drive this into the future. So I did want to mention this for those that are on right now. There's some next steps with what we do at Culture of Good. We love dreaming together with other organizations on how to develop a culture of good, a, a do good element that really drives uh, the organization and the culture and embeds that into the daily lives and work of every single stakeholder. So we build that together. Uh, we co-create and co-build together, and then we help to grow that through sustainability methods and tactics that we place in so that you have the ability to lead that forward. Uh, we want to encourage anyone to book a call with us. Shannon, you were going to mention um, some certification pieces. I know that um, there may be some that are on here that would like to be certified in a culture of good process, bring this into their organization, be that change agent. How? Tell us more about those two ideas. <laughs> well, that's the cool thing. Coming in fall, we will have a multiple layers of certification through the culture of good. Whether you want to be an internal champion, to influence, to be boots on the ground, to be carrying out this type of change, We'll have a truncated certification for those types of champions and people uh, who want to do that within their organization and maybe partner with someone like a culture of good to carry that out. We also ha will have full certification. We don't have it all identified as to when this, these will start, but coming in fall, uh, we'll have a longer certification and more thorough certification for people to actually partner with culture of good and carry this out um holistically the holistic process with all the documentation and the processes and the tools uh and things like that you can get fully certified and sort in culture of good and how to carry that out from uh beginning to end that rocks that rocks. yeah i'm excited about it <laughs> uh so if you're interested in any of that you can go on cultureofgood.com contact and it's a real quick thing throughout this month anyone who fills that out is um, we're gonna we're gonna select a company at random for those that fill out that form. It's a real quick, probably takes 20 seconds to fill that out. Um, and um, we're going to um, uh, select a winner that will have some time with us, an hour or two with our team, just to think and brainstorm and to get this into a way that will work specifically within your organization and for your instance. The last thing I would add as we end, lots of little of announcements. If you have an event coming up, I have a brainstorm session that I'm going to go live next week on Thursday from 11 to 12. And we're just going to brainstorm all the events uh, that you have coming up, ways to increase audience engagement, to do good while you're there with your team, and to really speak to the heart and soul of people. Business can be a force for good. George, Shannon, you guys are a tremendous force for good. I am excited to see what the future holds for those that were on with us today. Uh, hopefully you got some content that made you think that you can process. 
this will go, this will continue to be evergreen, will be available on our site and on LinkedIn as well to watch and to go through those questions. Um, if, if you're interested in wanting those questions typed out, we can, we can send that out to you. Just reach out to us again at cultureofgood.com slash contact. Let us know that's what you're reaching out for. And we can send you a list of all of those questions as well. So you can sit down with your team and ask them the same things and see what you get out of those responses so you know exactly how to build this moving forward. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, George. It's my pleasure, man. It's been an honor. As always, let's do Thank good you, together. Shannon. Yes. Bye, everybody. Let's do good Love together. Love to you all. <laughs> Hopefully we hear from you and those that have events. I'll see you next Thursday. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.